الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سلام قولا من رب الرحيم صدق الله العظيم عبد الله بن سلام رضي الله عنه إلى جريد صحابي الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم But before he became a Muslim, he was a Jewish rabbi. He was very well known and very well respected among the Jewish community. So in Medina Munawwara, there was a lot of Jews. There was three big tribes of the Jews. Banu Nazir, Banu Qurayla, Banu Qaynuqa. And the whole reason they had moved there is because three, four hundred years before the coming of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were going past that area and looking at the signs, looking at the location, looking at the, the mountains, the palm trees, they came to a conclusion that this will be the place where the final prophet will migrate to. So they asked the king that can we stay here and the king also made a house at that time that when that prophet will come then this is a house for him and generations after generations that house was the house of Abu Ayyub al-Sari radiallahu anhu <coughs> so it is safe to say that when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina Munawwara he didn't stay in Abu Ayyub al-Sadi radiallahu anhu's house rather he stayed in his own house which was built for him three, four centuries ago anyway Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu he says that I was standing at a distance trying to see the day the, day the Prophet sallallahu came to Medina Munawwara and I was looking at this whole scenery and subhanallah as soon as that face came in front of me. That beautiful face of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa as soon as that came into sight. Can you just imagine how great that face was? Jabir radiallahu anhu says that it was the 14th moon. I was going to Masjid al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa On one side was the 14th moon. On one side was the beloved face of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa I was trying to compare which is more beautiful, which is better, which is more beautiful. I had to come to a conclusion that the face of my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa was much better than the moon. So when that face came into sight, immediately I recognized that this face can never be the face of a liar. عَرَفْتُ أَنَّ وَجْهَهُ لَيْسَ بِوَجْهِكَ الضَّابٍ Can never be the face of a liar. Allah says regarding... The Jews, regarding the people of the book, الَّذِينَ آتِيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They recognize Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like they recognize their own children. Kaab Ahbar Rahimahullah, <coughs> he said to Umar Radiallahu Anhu, in fact, to be honest, we recognize the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even more than we can recognize our own children. Sometimes, we become doubtful regarding our own children that when he's not being obedient to me, when he is being rebellious, is this really my son? But he said, regarding Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have no doubt, no confusion. Anas ibn Malik says, two days of my life I can never forget. Day number one, the day Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Medina Manawara, Ada'am min al madinati kulla shay. Everything in Medina became bright. The whole Medina was lit up. And he said, the second day I can never forget in my life was the day Rasul Sallallahu left this world. Azlama min al madinati kulla shay. Everything in Medina became dark. That was the darkest day in history. That was the darkest day in the history of humanity. The greatest creation of Allah is leaving this world. Anyway, <coughs> so at that time, the first thing I heard Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu saying, the first thing I heard Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying at that time, four things. And inshallah, that is, that is the thing I want to share with you. 
And today let us take these four things to heart. Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, afshu salam, spread salam. The Prophet sallallahu did not say, say salam, spread salam. At this moment in time, many people are confused. We cannot shake hands with each other. And be it so, we need to take our precautions. But there is no, no law against saying salam. There is no law against spreading salam. Unfortunately, some people think that even saying salam to somebody in this occasion can become contagious. Yeah, you need to maybe shake in hands, maybe a problem for many people, but how can saying salam be a problem? Spread salam. Spread peace. Say it in such a way that people, other people who are confused, other people who have forgotten to say salam, even they remember to say salam. <coughs> and create this atmosphere of salam. Yeah, we need to look at the occasion. If the people are performing salah, if the is in the masjid, is not disturbing. Some, if it is disturbing somebody, then of course we need to be careful not to disturb anybody. But besides that, we need to make sure that we fulfill. Even Almighty Allah is saying salam. Salamun ala Nuhin fil alameen. Salamun ala Musa wa Harun. Salamun ala Ibrahim. Salamun ala Ilyasin. Salamun ala al-Mursaleen. Even in Jannah. Salamun qawlam min Rabb rahim Salam. salam wa at'im al-ta'am. Feed food to people. Don't just eat food. Today, unfortunately, Muslims have become such that they are known for eating the food. Nowadays, we don't have much programs and due to the most of our programs are online and that is not the best thing to do. But we have no choice. That is... But even when we are listening to the programs at home, whether whatever Zoom, whatever Mixler, whatever we are listening through, we should sit with Adab, with Wudu, facing the Qibla, as if we are sitting in the Masjid. Our heart should be as if we are sitting in the Masjid in the program. Only then we will benefit from the program. Otherwise we are leaning, we are stretching our legs, we are having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and enjoying and then with that we are listening to the words of Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu we will never benefit from the words of Allah with so much disrespect, so much dishonor Allah give us the love for the words of Rasul Sallallahu <coughs> if we are not going to respect the words of Allah the words of Rasul Sallallahu who will respect anyway so feed food to people at this moment of lockdown let us be you know worried about those people who are around us People who are, <coughs> you know, the vulnerable people, the less fortunate people, let us check on our neighbors. If we cannot, we cannot go to visit them, let us send them a message. Let us buy extra milk when we go shopping, extra bread, extra groceries when we go a little bit more. For me and you, it may not cost much, maybe an extra five pound, an extra ten pound. But subhanAllah, that could mean a whole week of, you know, provision for people who are in need. So that is أطعم الطعام Feed food Not just to the humans Even animals Even the other creations of Allah وصيل الأرحام Create bond family ties At this moment in time Maybe we may not be allowed to Visit our families Our friends Our grandparents If they are alive Our parents Our uncles Aunties But we can phone them We can message them are you okay? Anything you need? Just trying to check on you. If you need anything, we are here for you. And always try to be there for them. So even, it may not change whatever, maybe they won't even ask you for anything, but subhanAllah, it, may, it will make them feel happy. That, Alhamdulillah, there is somebody for me out there. So, wasilul arham. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith, Bukhari, man, but the person who man wasa man yas sarwa who the one who is happy, who wants, who is pleased, that Allah gives him a long life and Allah gives him a lot of income, lot of money, lot of provision, sustenance. He should be good, should be good to his family. So was wasallu billayl wan nasu niyam and perform salah when the world is sleeping. Perform salah. Tahajjul Salah, that is the most powerful Salah. Many people, they say, what a world we are living in today. People are sick, we can't even go to visit them. 
people pass away, we can't even go to the janaza. People, I said, subhanAllah, this is the best time for you to make dua. Start turning to Allah. Allah, Allah wants you to be disconnected from all the other creation. Get connected to Him alone. And at this moment in time, when your heart wants to do something, but you can't due to, you know, unforeseen circumstances, then that time the dua is, is definitely accepted, very readily accepted. Allah wants you to, wants to accept your dua. So let us cry for those who are sick. Let us cry for those who are passed away. Let us cry for those who are in hospital. Let us cry for those who have been tested positive. We don't know that dua. We don't even need to tell anyone. Many people, they say, I am making dua for you, but in reality, they are not, not making dua for anyone. Inna asra dua the quickest dua to be accepted. Da'watu ghaibin li ghaib is the dua of a person who is not there for a person, for absent person. He doesn't know he's, you're making dua for him. The angels are saying, I'm into this dua. So let us uh, bring these things that the Prophet sallallahu has commanded us, has uh, Instructed us to bring it into our life. تدخل الجنة بسلام. If you bring these things into your life, you will enter Jannah with peace as well. Allah first of all give me the ability, give all of us the ability to bring these things into our life, give all of us the understanding. Amin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Rasulina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله